Howdy everybody and welcome back to the Cast Gaming Channel, it's James here. And I've got another Napoleonic Total War 3 replay for you guys today. And it's going to be a 4v4 on Pomerania 2. But before we get, we get into the, uh, the cast for the day, I just wanted to remind everybody I would like to sponsor a tournament for uh, Napoleonic Total War 3. So if you're interested in that, go ahead check out the description box below it'll have the link to my discord server and email that you can send any replays to as well as sign up for the tournament uh, first prize for the tournament will be $100 as soon as I have about six to ten teams I'll go ahead and get that situated so let's go ahead and get this started all right so today we have uh, custom armies and we've got a 12 pointer France on the right side of the map here followed by the five pointer Septilace if that's how you pronounce it I'm not really sure uh, and we've also got Denmark in the far back left corner and then we have France Orient uh, on the left front side for the Imperials today. Uh, and on the Coalition side, we have... Oh, that's not Coalition. There they go. We have Prussia. Followed by Austria. Piedmont, Sardinia, and the Netherlands. So this map I've played a few times, gotten my, um, gotten, well, it's gone poorly for me, let's just say that. Um, but my initial thoughts on this map, if you're starting on this side, um, or actually just on, on either side, I tend to like to ignore this town on the right side. I don't think it's worth fighting over, uh, but then again, I more, I favor maneuver versus defending points. Um, and I think a lot of your action is going to have to be in the center. Uh, I think that's the best place to fight. It's the best place if you, uh, to, especially if you bring artillery. Uh, and also if you bring a lot of cav, that's going to be your best bet. Uh, this left side is pretty darn good for infantry because of all the forested area. You're very protect protected against cavalry. Um, the far left side here does have a road going down it, but it's hardly ever used. Um, I don't see a lot of action on this, and it's not very, in my opinion, it's not strategically important unless your plan is to come all the way around behind your opponents. But um, in these kind of situations, I don't really see, see a, a, a tactical advantage for doing that. Um, I think the most one of the most important things that you can hold in the entire map is this center location with these ruins and forested area. So if you command this area, you can you can plop some infantry in this forested area. I believe this is a little bit of a higher elevation right here. So if you can catch your opponents off guard, then you'll have an advantage. But it looks like we've got some action started already here a little bit. Uh, France, um, 1805 France has taken the town hall on the far right side. And they're going to be able to um, dominate Netherlands. Unless they get some backup. You've got some Piedmont Sardinia cab here. And since they've got, basically they've got this anchor, the town hall is going to become an anchor for their army to, to pivot or push up or defend. Uh, which is kind of a good thing about buildings in this game. I think sometimes people don't actually uh, realize. But in Netherlands' favor here is they have a hill which they could place artillery on, which would be a perfect spot. And they also got this um, this miniature wooded area that I think is, is beneficial. It, it'll protect any infantry that... If they can place them in the woods, if they want to push up a little bit, they can just place them right here and they'll be okay. And we've got 1805 France uh, chasing away some Piedmont, Piedmont Cav. 
not too much of an issue right here. Um, Army's just getting into place right now. Looks like France Orient isn't moving at the moment. Um, and so I think the plan is here, maybe if they're not going to move up, maybe they'll just kind of be the... Um, they'll just try to keep whoever's on this side from advancing around the flank. And then I think Denmark um, will try to link up with, with France, Orient, and maybe kind of cover the center area here. And since um, Sep um, Septiles is, um, is a weaker faction, they're probably just going to be more of a supporting role than this. Um, so they they might just help out where they're needed, or just maybe stick with France Orient, and maybe cover a little bit of section that Denmark can't cover in the center. Um, but Prussia's already already pushing up here on the right side, and it, you know I'm actually kind of surprised to see this because I don't from my matches personally. I have not seen a lot of armies attack this side. Uh, most of most of the uh, battles that I've played on this map have centered around, uh, well, the center, actually. And we've got Austria here coming to back up. I'm, what I'm assuming is they're coming to back up either Prussia or maybe they're taking the center here. It looks like they might have some diverging units. Um, and they're going to need to get there quickly. Because, you know, uh, 1805 France is vastly superior to Netherlands. Um, and if they can kind of, if they can kind of cut through the center here, maybe get through Denmark, they, um, they can separate the armies, which would be helpful. Um, I'd be a little bit. I mean, this is a nine pointer Prussia, so. I mean, they're gonna do. They'll be alright for the moment. Against uh, France here. Uh, but France is getting supporting some supporting units. So I'm not sure how well Prussia is gonna fa fare on its own. Um, it does look like they're kind of hitting a flank here, which is a good idea. And they're gonna keep their troops in the forest, which is smart. To reduce care. Uh, casualties if I was France Orient I would push up my infantry here a little bit into the forest at least to give them some cover and I think that's something that um, that players underutilizes the terrain I think that's an issue uh, Denmark uh, looks like it's pushing up their infantry to link up with with uh, France Orient if we got some Russia calf threatening in the flank of of France Orient. And here we... I, I'm kind of surprised by this. Um, if you're... If you're 1805 France, I would think you would be wanting to push up hard against the Netherlands. Uh, you're a vastly superior army. I mean... Yeah, Netherlands has this... They've got some howitzers on the hill here, but I mean, you've got the house. You can always fall back here. I think you really need to be aggressive on this side, especially, um, especially, you know, you don't see any, uh, backup infantry here. You don't see, you don't see Austria. There's some fights going on and it looks like there's some cav charges already on the left side here. Not sure who initiated this, but we've got Prussian Cav, Austrian Cav. Denmark is getting some backup from from um, 1805 France, and they've managed to route two Prussian Cav units. They've managed to route an Austrian Cav unit. Um, Prussia still got these dragoons here, which they need need to get in. Probably need to get away from this these units because they're gonna get hit in the side here.
And Denmark was managed to push up some infantry to help route this uh, this Prussian cab. And now Prussia's pushed up against against France Orient, and France Orient is just going for it. He is just bayoneting, charging the line here against Prussia. I don't think Prussia was ready for this. Charging in his men, charging in his cab. He's just breaking Prussia in the center. He's got some support from Denmark and he just went. No fear. Oh, he's breaking Prussia on this side as well. Got his cab to back him up. I, I got to tell you, I didn't see this coming at all. I thought we were. Oh, look at that volley point blank range. Well done. I didn't see this coming whatsoever. I thought we were going to have a nice little shootout. And if I was France, I'll tell you what, I'd be following up on this, on these gaps, these opportunities, charging my men back in. I would not let up on the pressure of Russia. Or I'm sorry, I would not let up on Prussia whatsoever. Look at all these routing units. You've got a Prussian square here. You've got uh, 1805 Cav routing another unit. You've got more Danmark infantry following up. And they're going to wrap around Prussia here. And they need to turn a unit over here because Prussia is just... This lone Prussian unit is is um, firing into the flank of this, this France Orient here. I don't think they see him over there. We've got the square formation routed. Holy cow, I did not see this coming. Go after Prussia, guys. You just charge yourselves right in there. And this, this unit's morale was already dropping. You've got the cab in there. Just get the finishing blow, get him right in. I did not think that this was going to happen. Holy cow, did that go off quick. Got some more untouched Prussian units on this flank and the general's coming around to support the units, but Prussia's in retreat on the left side. Danmark's coming around. Looks like Denmark split off some of his units to help out France Orient on the left side. And then he left a, a, a guard towards the center to help out his allies should they need it. And maybe that's why, maybe that's why France Orient didn't push up here. Is that they were just holding this section against the Netherlands so that their armies on the left could could go ahead and wrap around Russia and if they needed support that they they could uh, shift over we've got some Piedmont Sardinia uh, units in the center here they're just kind of holding uh, somebody needs to come up and help out Prussia where the heck is Austria This Prussian unit is facing. Let's see here if I can get closer. Facing some some French dragoons. They're facing one, two, three, four, five, six, potentially seven, seven units coming up on its flank here. And Prussia is also on the wrong side of this hill. It is not looking good. Well done already to, to France and, and uh, Denmark. 
just isolating this Prussian unit. And that's what I like to see. I like to see maneuver. I like to see um, enveloping armies. I like to see cutting off um, converging armies. This is the t this is my kind of game. I'll tell you that. Look at all these infantry units, and Denmark looks like he's extending the left flank to get behind. Uh, this Prussian line. Meanwhile, France Orient just keeps pushing up. They just keep pushing up. They don't even care that Prussia's firing into them. They're just out here in their beautiful pink uniforms. They don't care. They'll fire. They'll take that fire point blank. Prussia, Prussia could could do some some hurt to France Orient here if he pushed up these uh, Landwehr units on the side. He's got another unit of 122 men out there, which he could be really be using against France Orient. I mean, this France Orient unit has only at, is only at 62 men. This one's at 66. These guys have taken some damage. Oh, we've got uh, Denmark's going over for a charge on this side. There's not much Prussia can do. He just doesn't have any men. He lost them all in the beginning engagement. He's got no cab to support him. He's got no allies. Denmark is just continuing this push into the retreating Russian line. Uh, Denmark did lose a unit. Looks like they're they're tired, which is why they broke. But he's got a few more where that came from. France is continuing to follow up on this charge, shifting over their troops for some fire. Another Denmark charge here, and my guess is they're just going to continue to roll up the Prussian line here. France is still still maneuvering and Prussia needs to reposition his troops. He's just getting rolled up here. If he could bring his troops back, maybe to fire into the Denmark infantry. There's not a whole lot that Prussia can do here. I mean, maybe initially, instead of falling back to this side of the hill, he should have taken this house you can see here in the distance. I mean, at least then he'd have a... a nice defensive position. Danmark's just continuing to roll up this line. And he really needs to be pushing the... Uh, Prussia really needs to be pushing this flank. I mean, France is point blank. He could be shooting these. He could be using this infantry unit here to shoot the flank of uh, France. I mean, this is really just some in your face. I don't. I don't know how you can miss if you're firing that close, even with the uh, 19th century muskets. And there, there it goes. There goes Prussia. Once again, retreating. I think this is just going to be a bunch of mopping up here with the remaining Prussian units. Let's see if there's anything going on in the on the right side here. Wow, that was something. And we do have. It looks like we had some engagements on the other side here. Looks like a couple lost Netherland units. 
that now is a good time i think to start putting the pressure on netherlands uh piedmont looks like it's exploiting this gap in the and the imperial lines here uh, Danmark is pushing uh, the units that he had in the center to come over to um, to meet to link up with his allies but where the heck is Austria where did they go I, we saw him moving earlier okay here here he is here he is I don't know what the heck maybe Austria was kind of indecisive on where he wanted to go. Maybe he, uh, maybe the coalition started freaking out when Prussia started losing all their men. He went, was trying to get through this forest area to, to link up with his ally and then thought better of it after Prussia was defeated and came back into the center here. But the coalition doesn't have an opportunity. I mean, it's possible that these two armies could at least defeat this this uh weaker section of the line here or maybe they could get around Denmark on this on this center section which it would technically be the uh the far left of the imperial lines and kind of wrap them up roll around them while uh, uh maybe the netherlands does its best to hold or or push against france with um some artillery here But I still think uh, I still think France should be pushing this section. And if you could have some artillery right here, it would be extremely helpful for uh, uh, the the uh, the Imperial Army against Netherlands on this section. And there is a um, looks like this is a twelve pounder. Although I. I think this is a little bit this could potentially be too far back i don't know if he's the way the terrain is i don't know if he's going to be able to hit hit the lines here correctly or maybe maybe he is maybe he is maybe that was just from the 12 pounder against piedmont so maybe it is okay yeah if i was um i think the imperials should should come up into the center maybe go through these woods here maybe try and wrap around the the piedmont army and they definitely should do that once the once france orient and dan uh, the rest of Denmark are uh, free to go about this house they definitely need to come through this flank here although they do need to be careful because austria is still in the game um so austria could potentially be hiding in these um uh, this forested area here so I'm not a, uh, but it, he's a big question mark right now. I mean, you can see some Austrian cab here. And, you know, if I had to guess, he went over to, as I said earlier, he, if I had to guess, he probably was trying to get over to link up with Prussia on the right side. And, uh, now it looks like we had a charge from 1805 France. Uh, but uh, probably trying to take out the guns here, maybe going against some some weaker infantry. Looks like they were probably going for the guns here, and then uh, Piedmont was able to to follow up with a uh, counter cab charge. So it does not look like he was successful, and he lost a. Uh, okay, they're back now. Great, and they broke again. Okay, a little skittish, I guess. A little indecisive. Yeah, right now, like France. I mean, the Imperials don't necessarily have to advance um, right at the moment. They might want to scout to look to see where Austria is at. Um, they can buy their time to wait for this reinforcing these reinforcing armies. Um, to come over to the center so that they, they can outflank whomever. And I'm, I'm glad to see uh, Septiles was able to, to get some guns here, but unfortunately, 
There's a cav charge going in on these guns. And this is something, you know, I worry about all the time when on my artillery is that I don't like to have the guns on the on the exact same line as I have my infantry. And he was able to form square, which is going to be helpful against it's going to route this uh, this cav from Netherlands. Uh, but I don't, as I was saying, I don't like to keep guns on the line with my infantry because of cav charges like that. You can't get infantry uh, to intercept the, the charging cavalry in time. And most of the time, the infantry alone is just not able to, to take on or to route units in time. So I like to have it a little bit behind so I can cover any charges that way. And that's this is actually... Um, a common mistake that I see all the time in in matches, which is why, you know, I, I like to point this out whenever I see a match. Now, some people are of the opinion that if you put it on the line, you can get canister shot off more easily. But um, and that is true because you'll have you'll be at a closer range. But unfortunately, you know, you're just way more vulnerable to charges. And Netherlands was able to be scared off with just this. A uh, single French line unit and like some, some, uh, some hurt, uh, and some hurt units right here. Now there is a, a cav charge coming up, but he does have a unit that can form square. I'm not really sure why he wasn't pushing harder on the side. Got a cav charge coming in here, and these units are. They were out of position on a, and they didn't form square. I think he moved him out specifically to form square to, to help his army retreat. And then he just never formed square. I'm not really sure why that is. And we got another cab charge here in the center, but it looks like it wasn't successful. Uh, Piedmont's kind of reform their lines here, lines to uh, uh, link up with the ruins. And, you know, I got to ask where the heck, I still got to ask where the heck is Austria? So I've got, okay, I see Austria's placed its guns all the way back here because I think they're, they're thinking maybe this is where Denmark is going to try and outflank them. But I don't, this isn't where these guns are needed right now. They're pretty much useless. They're needed at the front. They're needed right here to either route uh, this the Imperial Center here or they're needed to route or at least hold off against 12-pointer France It's right now the combined armies you know, you've got three armies facing a combined army of two and there just is not enough There's not enough strength So we've got another uh, Cav charge by some curiosers, curiosers, however you say it, some heavy cav, and they're going for some infantry that can't form square on Piedmont. Now Piedmont was able to to form square behind the line, but I don't know if that's going to be enough to defend this infantry. You can see the numbers from this heavy cav were already dropping. Piedmont's going in for a counter charge. And that scared away the uh, 1805 uh, heavy cavalry from France. Now I think this Piedmont's got some artillery here. Maybe should be pointed at, at this section right here. Maybe I believe this is close enough for canister shot. Or maybe he's attacking this this cavalry in the back. If I was him, I'd limber up this artillery. I'd move it back. And it looks like he's moving up some extra infantry. And I would use this infantry to cover this, this artillery right here for Piedmont. And uh, France 1805 is pushing up on this side against Netherlands. Netherlands just has some... Looks like he's just got a few skirmishers here. Now would be a good time for a bayonet charge against these skirmishers. He could... Um, roll get rid of these skirmishers really fast and then uh, hit the flanks of this Netherland infantry. And Piedmont is slowly fading here in the center. 
He needs to get this this artillery back. And okay, uh, he looks like he went for a canister shot. He realized that that's probably they're close enough for that. Uh, these cannons should be canister shot. Set on canister shot against um, this Imperial line infantry. So it looks like he's he's wheeling it round. It's good to see this a little bit back behind the line. Eighteen oh five France is going in for a charge on the flank here. It's going to route these units. He really needs to form square with this unit if he can. It looks like it's engaged though with the cavalry already. What's going on here? It looks like there was a charge for some infantry. From the Imperials and they just... They were stopped dead in the tracks by some Netherland infantry and also some Cav here. Excellent counter by, uh, by the Coalition there. Well done. Okay, here we go. Here's Austria finally coming up. They need to be running in order to get in position because all you still got France over here and you've got um, uh, Denmark's infantry coming over. It looks like uh, uh, Piedmont was trying to take out. Going in for a charge, maybe going in for the general, maybe trying to go in for Denmark's uh, um, artillery. And this is... Denmark's artillery is not in the best position. You can see he's um, he's hitting the ground here, um, but he's doing what I what I was talking about where he's got the... Okay, nice hit there. You can see some men flying, but he's got his artillery in the back. I like that. And we've got uh, Imperial side going in for a charge. Once again, is he going to get there in time? On this, I, this might have been a mistake by Piedmont. He might not be able to protect his artillery. And they were able to they were able to get this artillery. I don't know if it was routed. All right, he was able to at least engage the artillery, so they're not going to be able to pull back any farther. What? Oh, here we go. Uh, 1805 France sent in a, a cab charge here, able to get the guns on this side and able to roll up Piedmont on this on this center section. Uh, Piedmont was able to send in some some counter um, was able to counter the charge with heavy cav of its own which is going to force France to retreat here but I don't know if Piedmont can stop the bleeding I mean now they're being cut off Piedmont is being cut off from its allies Netherlands on this left flank and Netherlands is re continuing to retreat I think France should continue to pursue on that side uh, while uh, Denmark can, continues to engage. You can see, here we go, Austria is finally being aggressive, finally getting their men into position. Uh, if I was Piedmont, I'd say, where the heck have you been? But it's nice to see you. Denmark's having to fall back on this side. They can't take Austria by themselves, but that's okay. They don't need to. They just need to hold on long enough for their allies to roll up this Piedmont line. And once they do, it's just going to be it's going to be another 3 on 1 scenario and then they're going to have to face a three and a half uh potentially three and a half um armies versus just Austria. This is an excellent um excellent strategy, excellent positioning um by the Imperials. I really like what they've done here. You know, they, they've broken this section here. Here, They're trying to spearhead, wrap up this, this line infantry here. Um, and looks like France has pushed up a little bit on this left side, which I like to see. They're getting enveloped, so maybe it's best to push back a little bit like they're doing. Um, if I was Netherlands, I would continue to... I would do my best to... To get rid of these this infantry or maybe support this side some more or if or if you're netherlands 
what you might be, do in this situation is fall back to your artillery on or fall back completely to the hill send some reinforcements here to cover the middle um the other thing you could do is maybe so send austria to reinforce the center section because the center is where the the imperials are the weakest they've only got their five pointer whose name I can never pronounce correctly, in the center. That's it. I mean, yeah, they've got some supporting cap, but that's, that's tired. France would take a little while to get to them. We've got France going in for... Well, I thought they were going to go in for a charge on this line, which they are on this section, but I thought they were going to use these other units. Is this going to be enough to break the Piedmont line? I'm not sure. If I was France, I, maybe I would have just bayonet charged all these lines here. And Piedmont's counter charging the French infantry. Well done. Now Piedmont has been he's been taking on two armies, um, essentially by himself. I mean, both Piedmont and Netherlands have been essentially taking on two armies by themselves. But Piedmont, I've seen some excellent counter charges by Piedmont. Um, unfortunately, it's just too much here. Denmark has has enjoyed um, has joined with the 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 charge here. There's some counter charges by Piedmont, which is going to route this 1805 unit. Some more charges coming in here. Looks like uh, Piedmont thought better of it. Austria really needs to put pressure on, on Denmark here. Or they need to isolate this French unit. But what I think is going on on this flank is France, is France has got the high ground here. France Orient's got the high ground. He doesn't really need to engage Austria like this. I mean, yeah, it's buying time for his allies, which is totally fine. Um, it, it's not a bad strategy whatsoever. The thing is, if he can get Austria to chase, well, then that just that just allows these guys to have no reinforcements whatsoever. Denmark looks like he's going in for a charge here. There's an open spot for some Austrian artillery. And he's going to get that artillery uncontested. Still on the left side, they're just, uh, the Imperials are not pushing. They see where their opportunity here, which is on the center and the right flank uh, of the ruins. And they're they're going to continue to fight and push up in the center because Piedmont doesn't have a lot left. Um, and Austria's, the strongest part now is not in the center, it's on the flanks. And here's some poor... Poor repositioning by Austria. If Austria is just going to bend around, what he needs to do is maybe only... Um, he needs to only just commit maybe three units on this side, on this flank, and then he needs to use the other units, maybe two. And then he needs, to not, needs the other two uh, units to wrap around the flank here, uh, maybe defeat uh, France Orient really quick. Uh, but right now, like, you're not helping out. If you're just here, you're not really helping out your allies, buddy. I mean, this is where they need you, right here. What you could be doing against France Orient, since France Orient is so weak, is you could be pushing, uh, pulling back your line into the forest here, where you have the advantage. Leave a few units here to cover France Orient. Shift the rest of your units in the center and go after this uh, five-pointer Imperial unit. Of this um, uh, Imperial Army. That's where you're needed. I mean, Netherlands has been able to hold off this section of the map because they, uh, France, the Imperials haven't been and push, haven't really been pushing too hard on this side. It's all been the center and, and this section of the map by the ruins. And Piedmont's doing the best he can. He's reforming, getting his troops in line. Um, Looks like France Orient's lost some units in the push, or maybe they've been sent over to deal with the Netherlands.
And Danmark can't really reinforce his, um, the infantry here. Denmark can't really reinforce his allies except for where he's at because he's pinned by Austria, which is at least something, at least something in the favor of the coalition. Let's take a look at these units here as they fire in your face. These aren't some, some bad looking units from this Imperial faction. And they managed to uh, route a couple more units. Piedmont is going to have to fall back. I mean, the Ruins is probably going to be their best bet, or maybe they need to, to link up with Netherlands on this side. Um, but they're just going to be continued to hammer, be hammered by um, artillery from Denmark here, no matter where they go. Here we go. This is a mistake. This is a mistake what I'm seeing here. Austria needs to ignore uh, you beaten France or you need to ignore them. You need to roll up the Denmark line here. May it, it, if you're worried about Orient France coming over again, leave a couple units here as you advance as a rear guard and just you can get behind or at least force the pressure from Denmark off of Piedmont so that Piedmont could deal with just these five, three or five units um, from this weaker Imperial faction. Or they can counterattack Denmark. I mean, that's really what Austria should be doing. France here still engaged. Uh, 1805 France still engaged with Netherlands. Like, so they're, they're just holding on this flank. Which is good. They shouldn't. This is the weaker faction. They don't really want to push up with this this weaker faction. It's really just to kind of keep Netherlands in place, keep them from um, hitting the flanks of this this French side here. And it's good to see that that Austria is at least putting pressure on the flank of Denmark. Like I said, they this this infantry isn't doing anything, and this is both. It needs to be pulled over. It needs to be. You need to redeploy your army to this side, because you actually have a really good opportunity to wrap around these armies. And you see, you're forcing Denmark to retreat his flank here. You know your units in the woods are holding. Denmark is retreating here, trying to redeploy his army. Now, he is getting some support from a couple units. We got a Grenadier unit and a line infantry here. I, w I wonder if this is elite infantry um, from this faction. Oh, and Austria had a, a Cav unit here. It looks like it's just was sitting there. He wasn't paying attention. Denmark's hitting the charge in there. And there, uh, this combined... Um, Imperial army is wrapping around Netherlands at the moment. Netherlands is in real trouble. It's good to see that he's at least using the forested area to give himself some protection. Um, but he needs to make a move. He needs to probably retreat farther back up on this hill. We got a, a French Cav unit in the lines here. Hitting an unsuspecting uh, Netherlands heavy calf unit and it's going to rout him. I mean, Piedmont's kind of pushing back up against... Well, it looks like they're reforming their lines. They've got a unit in the ruins. Austria's still coming up. And what the heck happened here? What the heck happened here? Austria's r routing and retreating. They've just got way too many units on the side. Way too many units. You need to be taking these units and hitting this flank hard. We've got some uh, 1805 France Cav wreaking some havoc and 
Piedmont line here. Catching a lone unit out of position that can't form square. These Austrian units are not looking very good. Looks that looks to be about a half strength, two thirds strength for uh, for both of these armies, for both of these units. And this is a shame. Austria Austria is divided from their own army. Looks like you have carrots on top of your heads, guys. You know, the leafy green part of the top of the carrot. That's what these guys' helmets look like. Or hats. Would that make you carrot tops? Maybe that joke would work better if you're... If you were all in red uniforms, or your hats were red. But nobody pays me for my jokes. Probably for good reason. And we see here France is wrapping up. Its combined ar uh, Imperial Army is wrapping up against Netherlands. They're, all they can really do is retreat at this point. Um, best case scenario, they link up here with Piedmont, but probably not going to be able to reach that in time. Here we go. We got Denmark pinning Austria in place. They're not doing, not able to do anything. We've got this. Uh, we've got this wrap around the Austrian line, and you know, if I was Austria at this point, you know, you got two options. You can either go back into these woods here, or you can retreat back to your other units on this hill, force the coalition to come after you, or I'm sorry, the force the Imperials to come after you. Um, and fight up on the hill. I mean, you don't necessarily want to be sandwiched between uh, uh, France and and his allies, but I mean, splitting your army like this is just is not smart. It's not smart at this point. If you were here to be a reinforcing army, then that's something. But look at these plumes. I think that's what you call them, plumes. I think that's pretty cool. The white, the gold, and the blue. Uh, maybe this is what rolled up the side so easily. Denmark repositioned their artillery. Probably got a lot of shots in there. Keeping their artillery in the back. Piedmont's lines here, close to breaking. Let's see if we can see where everybody's at here. Netherlands is continuing to retreat. Don't have much of a choice. They're completely cut off from Piedmont. And Austria is slowly dwindling here as Piedmont is about to crumble. I think Austria is trying to take care of the rest of France, but of France Orient, but I mean France Orient had a fantastic beginning, but unfortunately they haven't played much of a factor in the the mid to late game. It's just you should be ignoring this army, Austria. Ignore this army. Come back over here. Try and defeat at least Denmark and uh, his allies here. And now uh, 1805 France is joining their allies on this flank, and they're going to easily, easily take on Piedmont.
So losing Prussia at the beginning of the game really hurt the coalition. Probably would have been smarter for Prussia to just await. Keep France Orient in place for Austria to come up. Oh, he's triple stacked some units here. He really needs to get them out of the way. Turn these guys around. We can see some uh, some action here from the artillery. Is Austria going in for a charge? Looks like it. Oh no, nope, he's just moving up his his infantry here. France in this house has been able to just really give it to Austria. And he really doesn't have... His units are, are extremely thin, but he's got stacked units in this house. He's really been able to uh, stick it to Austria here. And to my surprise, Piedmont is still in this game. I sincerely thought Piedmont would have been gone by now, especially with uh, now these French units linking up with their allies here. You can hardly see Piedmont through all this brush. Good volley, gents. Denmark should be pushing up this infantry unit to attack Austria. Maybe he doesn't see it through all this brush, or maybe he's too busy dealing with uh, the infantry units here from Austria. Looks like Austria is peeling off a couple units, maybe, to go help help take this pointer. But I mean, if you're gonna just, if you're gonna go after this uh, this house here, why not just shift all your army? This is the the end here. Piedmont's just trying to get the kills in while he can. Stack the uh, stack the ruins here. It's got his general in there. You can see where the the lines were in the game. Line here, line here. Here's a line infantry unit, a line infantry unit here. Tons of dead line infantry right here. All these nice, beautiful red uniformed men trying to take over these historical ruins here. Austria was able to at least route the, the rest of the uh, French infantry outside of the house. Not sure if he's going to be able to actually take the house. Um, there's still a couple units in here. Bringing over what's left of his infantry. Still got a unit stuck out here. Okay. 
Piedmont's being stubborn in the ruins. They've got... Uh, they've only got 87 men left. And they're being fired on from pretty much all sides, but... They're still there. Netherlands looks like it's just falling back as far as it can. Maybe he's gonna uh, make a last stand at this house here. But what the heck of a battle. I mean, that, that, uh, the way it popped off in the beginning there with, with France Orient versus, uh, Prussia was just crazy. I was not expecting a, a full out bayonet charge on the line first thing when you encounter Prussia. Uh, and it, Prussia really got hurt by the, the combination of the uh, Denmark Cav with um, the um, 1805 French Cav also coming to the rescue and, and the Denmark Infantry was able to help out um, support that the cavalry engagement as well. And I guess uh, Austria was able to, to defeat uh, France, finally. It's like France Orient's off the map now. Um, but at what cost, gentlemen? At what cost? You've got just a few units left. But yeah, as I was saying, it was one heck of a game. I was uh, super impressed uh, with the the Imperial factions. They played really well, played really smart. Even though you know I I don't like to use this house as an anchor point, or I don't I don't like to use um, I don't like to fight by buildings. I like to just maneuver around them, bypass them, um, and kind of like take my enemy in the flank. But having said that, I mean, this is a perfect example of of, you know, other different types of strategies. But it was just really cool to see uh, uh, Prussia fold so quickly with a, uh, an unexpected bayonet charge. Um, and then, you know, we had it was the center breaking was a really cool pivot point. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, I think there's a couple, a couple poor choices the coalition made. One was to obviously was Prussia to advance all by itself. Two, the other big factor was uh, Austria. Austria was just a question mark for like, I don't know, a third of the match, half of the match. They just were nowhere to be found. I don't even know what was going on. Um, because you saw the guys' units uh, moving at the beginning of the match, but then they just kind of had disappeared. And they weren't supporting either side. Had they been supporting uh, Prussia, maybe that might have been a, a, a helping factor. Had they just um, supported the, the center units here, had they supported Piedmont and uh, Netherlands, maybe that might have been enough. I, I don't know. Maybe they could have uh, rolled up Denmark since... Uh, France Orient was actually pretty hurt. I mean, yes, he had several units at the end of that, maybe eight or nine units, but unfortunately they didn't have a whole lot of men per unit and probably would have routed pretty quickly. Uh, had had France Orient been forced to attack Austria, if they had come into this forested area, you know, and then they could have just... And there was also a missed opportunity by Austria here um, in this forested area where they could have wrapped around and behind uh, Denmark's line here and that really would have that really would have taken the pressure off of Piedmont because Piedmont was doing a great job Piedmont did an excellent job holding the center section in the ruins um, but he just didn't have any support I mean neither side really had uh, neither Netherlands or Piedmont really had any support and that's that's what uh, really hurt things for them So it looks like um, this is just going to be mopping up units. Uh, 
Austria's got a few units here. I mean, they've got some line infantry. And some units in the house. That's not going to be... That's probably not going to be too much of a problem for, for those combined Denmark uh, forces. Uh, Netherlands and what's left of Piedmont. Looks like they're going to make a final stand at this house. So I'm just going to fast forward really quick. All right, that was one heck of a game. I really enjoyed that. Uh, for the Imperial faction, we have Stan uh, playing the five-pointer faction I cannot pronounce. Um, and he had 912 kills. We had Seedman playing the Denmark faction, 2,165 kills. Um, we have J444 Hager as um, France... Uh, 1805 France, and he had 2,090 kills. And then Achilles was France Orient and had 2,129 kills. So this is a, a high high mortality rate match. Um, Danomar 101 was playing uh, Austria as a coalition. He had 935 kills. For Piedmont Sardinia, we had um, Roman numeral 4 Beauregard. Uh, SOTR with 1,115 kills. Uh, new, new GPU was Prussia and he had 1,015 kills. And Medieval Squirrel was Netherlands and he had 517 kills. So here for the... Uh, here's the kill count. Here the top unit was 303 kills. Only lost 57. Scroll down here so you can see. Yeah, it was one heck of a game. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in, um, and I'll catch you on the next one.